Yeah, just just to go go through basically what he's going. He's gonna do the things that are found in the Ricky Frank kit, and his kit does have the grinding diamond and fine. And then he does like to use the coarse, the medium, the fine, and the very fine. You guys. So mm -hmm. just so you know, color. go ahead, Ricky. Talk. A different color course. Um. So I would normally go. I would grind the surface. With the course. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the flex diamond. Yeah, just the, they just call it grinding diamond. Okay. And I would be trying to get the wires that are sticking out removed. I'd be trying to, so that's step number one. Step number two is going to be to chase the lines, which means I'm removing the enamel from the wires. So I'm not thinking about highs and lows area, low areas. All I want to do is get all the wires exposed so there's no enamel on the wires. That's step two. And then step three is going to be to look for low areas between the lines where the enamel may be too low. And then I have to ask myself different questions to create a plan to decide what to do next. So those are the three things. I'm going to remove the enamel from the side. I'm sorry, the wires from the side. Because you see how that wire is sticking off the end there? Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. want to avoid, I'm, and one of the things I'm always asking myself is not only what do I want, but what do I want to avoid? So what I want to avoid here, what I want to avoid is having this disc spin yep. and, and yank the wire in a different direction and it chips the enamel. Right. So when I hold the piece and turn it, I'm going to be turning in a way that is following the line going off the piece yep. in the same direction. All righty. And right. then I'm going to look at the piece when it's all matte. It's going to be very scratchy uh, and hopefully all matte. Um, and then I'm going to have some choices about what to do for my polish. So let's just go ahead and do this now. You can see the the one I'm. I don't know, Ani. Why does one side get? Why does that get so worn and this doesn't? You know that has to do with a little pressure. So once the wheel starts getting a certain pressure, that one side, since it has a cushion, is wanting to give in more, and that's all you see. That's why I tell people don't push. Just light. Let it glide. So, you know what? I know you share this with a lot of your um, students. Mm -hmm. So, it could have remembered that pushy pushy back then. But mine, for example, don't do that. Like, wow. look at all mine. Like, every single one of mine, don't do that. Well, I'm going to have to, I think, maybe do a new one and do a, a kind of a control to see if I can figure out how not to have that happen. But yeah. I've, I've used this, Ani. I've probably used this one for four years. And four probably, years. And I probably I probably ground six at least six hundred pieces with this one piece. Wow, Ricky. Six hundred pieces with this yeah. one diamond. Yeah. Okay, well then it, that explains that little. But I know, and it's hard to get rid of it too, because there's still beautiful diamond on there. You I, know? Yeah, it works. I'm gonna you know, I'll keep using it until it doesn't work. Or it doesn't give me the result and far everything Absolutely. works. You always get a result until I don't get a result that I want. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just put a little bit of water here. I'm sure some See? of you guys already know this, but I'm it does, it does do just it. like what I do. Beautiful. Love you, Ricky. I learned from the expert. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my piece. Let's. Um, let us. Uh, mirror this part. the other side yeah yeah good going to left left all oh, that's good there we go and i usually do this about maybe two-thirds speed and i'm going to do what i said with the wires so i'm following the direction of the wires coming off the piece so these are going that way This one 
is going this direction. And that had a little bit more wire sticking out, so I used much less pressure. Yet I'm thinking about what I want to avoid. Yes. Okay, and I think I've got it pretty good now. So I can do several different things. I can kind of do an overall um, plan or work on different areas. And I usually just do one thing and then it just kind of evolves. But let me show you how I'm holding it. So I'm kind of starting like this. And of course, it depends on the size of the piece. You know, obviously going to hold a bigger piece differently than a small piece. Um, I had a, um, a nurse that worked for an arm surgeon once watch my demo and she said, Ricky, let me tell you what you're doing. One hand is always um, controlling the pressure and the other hand is turning the piece. Right. And what you're doing is you're unconsciously changing back and forth as you do that. So that might be something for you to consider when you're using your jewel tool of paying attention to what are my hands and fingers doing? Because if you're not aware of what you're doing, you can't change it. But if you're aware that you're turning or changing the pressure with one hand, you can be more intentional with it. I agree. Well said, Ricky. Thank you. Yeah, your pressure is really good. Very nice. Do you see how he like moves it? Go ahead, Ricky. That's okay. So let's just take a look and you can see where the wires have been exposed and where they haven't been. So it looks like a wide, flat, white line where the enamel has been removed. So I've gotten that pretty good. I've still got some low areas here. You see it's Remember I talked about it's shinier matte? So it's shiny here, but there's no point grinding down more enamel until I've started to grind some of this because I want it to be even. And then I can make a decision, is this low enough with the wires and do I need to put more enamel here or should I just grind down and remove more of the enamel? Right. So I'm gonna keep rotating it. Anyway, I'm going to change this for a second. I'm going to change the angle, and I want to see if you can see more what I'm saying. We don't have to see the full disc. You can kind of give us a half, like a half moon of the disc. Let's see. I want to. Yeah, that's good. I think yeah, it's the angle of the camera. Looks good. Beautiful. I think I'm going about half speed now. I'm going to turn it up a little bit just to go faster. So one thing that Ani told me years ago that I always think of and I tell my students is make believe that I'm sitting in a rocking chair on my porch and I'm just kind of <laughs> gently rocking back and forth. Nice, nice, slow movements across the piece. Um, so I try to remember that actually every time I'm doing a piece. Um, and let's look at now. There are a couple areas where there's enamel over the wire. See the difference? Here to here, right there, there's enamel on the wire. Right there, there's enamel on the wire. And yep. over here. Um, but what I wanted to talk about 
was what are the different movements I'm doing with my hands? So one movement is slow rocking, maybe half to two thirds across the piece. Okay, I'm using a three inch disc now. I could rock it more if it was a, a wider four inch one, but I don't have a four inch flex diamond. So, oh, we have to get it for you, Ricky. <laughs> uh, we now have all grades available in the four inch. Oh, super. Yeah, well, that's new. I haven't told them. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. So that's one movement, a long, slow movement. Then another movement is, you know, I've got this edge here. And what I want is for that edge to just kind of taper over and have a nice curve, but not remove much enamel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have another movement where I'm going to go along the edges, just kind of tilting this way gently. So that's movement number two. Uh -huh. Movement number three is going to be going along the length so that, I mean, this one's kind of easy because it's straight. But when I get to that curve there or that point, I don't want to take too much enamel off of there. So I'm going to curve the piece. So this is a long, steady rock. This is a slight angle. Mm -hmm. And this is a long, slow curve across there. Now, one of the things I love about the jewel tool is um, I can get a really wonderful tapered point or a corner on a piece that when I used to use my expanding drum, you know, which I used for probably 15 years, I always ended up getting a um, facet somewhere. Mm. But with the jewel tool, I'm able to totally control that angle, kind of going like that and adjusting the pressure so that I'm not getting facets there and getting one side too thin and one side too thin. That's one of the things I really love about this. So I'm going to keep working on this for a little while longer. Great. Wow. Well said. That's excellent explanation, Ricky. He's using the grinding diamond, you guys. The grinding diamond. So I'm going to do this angle now. We'll do all four sides. You see how he's curving, you guys, along that edge? He's bringing it, rocking it. Rocking, rocking. He's rocking it. Very nice. Full control. So good. I could watch you like all day long, Ricky. So I'm working on that one. There we go. We got that one spot there. And let's take a look at it. So I've got, can you see a few glass? Here's an area that's still enamel on the wire. So, and there's enamel on the wire. So I need to work those two areas before I make more choices. So I'm just going to put this in the water and get some of the grit off of there and dry it. And as I was doing this, I was noticing that I can't always see the wire that I'm getting enamel off of through this. But what part of the beauty of this tool is that I can see how I'm rocking the piece. And that gives me control. Um, if I can't see it, I don't know whether to turn it more or less or how far. So I can, I can see it, and so as I see it, that 
that vision is going into my brain and my hands are adjusting. And that I, that's what I think a really great part of this process is, is that connects my hands to my eyes to the tool. Mm -hmm. no, my hands and my eyes and the material and the tools all together. Hand-eye coordination. Beautiful. Yeah. So I've just got, I think, a couple little areas where it's glossy, and that means it's low. Right there. Let's see if we can turn it. So normally I want that all matte. So I have two choices. I can keep grinding down um, to get that level, which means I'm removing enamel. So if I'm worried about losing depth or losing color, what I'll do instead is I'll clean the surface, all the grit that got removed. Some of it's in the pits here. So I would remove that. I, I can show you how I do that. And then I would put a little bit of clear enamel in those low areas. Or I can just keep grinding down and make it level. And I think I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to remove a little more. And I just decided that I think I'll add that in so people can see how I do that. So let's get it under. You can see that little glossy area there. So right. the, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, well, let's let's okay, let's talk about three options at this point. So if I ground this down, then what I would do is start to think about the polishing because I've just been grinding right now. I've been polishing. So what I want to do to polish is I want to remove those deeper scratches and keep removing the scratches until I can't see them. Look at, I, I just noticed, see those little other glossy areas? Yep. Yep. So I got a couple repairs to do, but if I was ready to go to the lapidary now, the finer polishes, I've got two choices. I can go to the course and then work my way down through the different ones until I get to the very fine. Mm -hmm. That's that's most of the work. And, you know, actually, this is most of the work to begin with. Absolutely. So, so I yep. would call that just step one would be full lapidary. Yes. Another approach would be to put this in the kiln, do a kiln polish that seals all the scratches. And then I probably start with this again. But there's going to be so um, so little time using this to get those deeper because there are no deep scratches anymore because I okay. fired them out with the kiln. I smoothed okay. it all. So after this step, Ricky, yeah. you suggest firing it because I, I don't have a kiln and I go straight down the yeah. down the line of diamonds. Yeah. So I got to where this um, this fall when I was making. And probably about 150 new pieces for my 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 Christmas show, my mm -hmm. online Christmas sale. Even the tiny little pieces, I found that you know because I could fire you know ten of these at a time on a screen. Uh huh. That saved me time rather than going through all of the tediousness of having to. To me, the tediousness is ha is having to look at scratches. Uh huh. Look, not necessarily getting them out, but trying to find them. And so by doing that kiln polish on all those pieces, it just cut down my polishing time so fast. Yeah. Like well, you're doing a lot of pieces. Total I production like, work. I don't like the glare. So I then just quickly go through all these different, you know. Right. Yep. All the different steps. So those quick. are all the steps. Yeah. I go through all the steps. But because I've gotten rid of these deep scratches, it's much faster. Yeah. And I understand. Not only is it faster, but it's, I don't have to concentrate as much. And, yeah. you know, we all, we all have limits to our brain capacity, you know, to be able to concentrate for less of time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's much easier to do a lot of work if you don't have to concentrate as much. So, 
let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take something called, let's see if I can bring this over to another camera. Ask some more questions. Okay, hold on one second. Ricky, so yeah. the areas that were a little recessed that you didn't grind. So yeah. if that was, if you gave me this piece to grind, clearly I don't have enamel nor right. kill. Stick that back in and put another layer on. So I would just kind of feather that in and even it out. Yes, you would keep grinding. I mean, yeah, because so it doesn't seem like a huge dip. So okay, if someone okay. doesn't want to put another layer on, couldn't they just lightly grind that and blend it? No, well, no, it's not. Well, then you're going to have an uneven layer. You're going to have a oh. surface that has highs and lows. Okay. Okay. So the way, I, the way, the way that I would approach it. Let's hold on a second. Because it doesn't look that deep to. It's not, it's not but if you want to have, I mean, I'm not trying to get a perfect surface, but I don't want to have something where a customer touches it and it just feels weird or they ah. look at it at an angle and it looks weird because remember my aesthetic, I want to be able to look down into the glass. I don't want something there that's going, Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to have that. Oh, wait a minute feeling. I understand. It's all in the details. Yeah. I love it. Gotcha. So, so I'm going to make a choice. Am I going to grind more enamel and remove it, remove depth so that it's all level? And if I do it, I'm going to do it over the whole piece. Yes. Yeah. Now, over time, you look, you know, you make enough pieces, you get the eyeball things. And, you know, sometimes I know on my last firing, I'm putting enamel over wires because I need to get to the low areas. Mm hmm. And I'm not trying to be careful and only put it in the low wires. It's not worth taking the time to think about. Got it. So I'm not being that careful at the end of the firing. I just want to make it so um, I know how much I'm going to grind down to get the wires exposed. And, you know, with experience, you're going to figure it out. And then there are going to be times where um, it's just easier. I know I'm going to take this piece, especially because it's big. The bigger the piece, the more scratches, the more work it takes to polish. So yep. sometimes it's just, you know, if I've got six of these, it just makes a ton of sense to do the kiln polish on all six. Right. Because then I might be saving 20 minutes or even if I save 10 minutes on each one, I've just saved an hour. That's Beautiful. A, that's a long time. So hope that answered your question. That's good. Someone's asking, can you use the torch? And sure. Maya's asking. Yeah. Yeah. He says yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, so let's go ahead and change back and show you what I'm doing here. Yes, I'm excited. I'm riveted. I'm so so I've, got, I've got something called a glass brush here. And it's basically got little, um, let's see, it looks like kind of like a cigar with little threads of glass here. I think it's some what kind of What is that? <laughs> And oh, so what cool. I'm going to do is go like this. Yeah, let's to right. clean all the dust off. Is to get the grit out of the pits. Yep, beautiful. Yep. So, and it's also nice when it's you know when it's wet, you don't see the scratches. Mm -hmm. So you this the dust in here is microscopic. Yep. So I just do it all over the piece and do it several times because you can't see anything change. Now, if you forget to do this, which, you know, sometimes in a, in a live class, you know, it's something students forget to do. When you fire it, the surface will look kind of like a matte gray and yep. real ugly, but luckily you could re you could grind that off too. And yeah, be I was just going to say, I've seen that happen and people just go, Oh, I just take it to my jewel tool and grind it away. Yep. <laughs> so, okay. So but this, this is yeah. nice. I like this little brush technique. You guys, this is really cool. Called the glass brush. I'll give you a tip about glass brushes. There are two, there are two different kinds on the market. This is one that's surrounded by rubber. Mm -hmm. And there's another one that's surrounded by string that you kind of unwind. Mm. This one, I have never gotten a splinter from. The ones with the strings are less expensive, but they give you little splinters if you touch oh, them. Oh, no, 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 no. And I like the rubber one already. You can't see them because it's glass. 
so they're hard to get out of your fingers. So this this is kind of pricey. This might be, I don't know, forty fifty dollars. This is a this is about a um, maybe three quarters of an inch wide. I've seen some that are really really big. Uh -huh. But for jewelry making, this one's great. Beautiful. And I've, I've had this one for probably twenty years. Okay, so your forty five dollars is now You'll not even wear sets. It out. You'll never wear yeah, it. Yeah, no. Sometimes buying something of quality will save you. Oh, you know this. Will save you in the long run. It's not like I invented that. It's true. Right. That's lovely. Okay, so there is my piece. And let's go ahead and put a little bit of flux on there. Okay. It's going to put flux on there. And so I don't have as good a light there. So you know, I'm having this, a little. That piece looks like the one I have of yours. Look at this. Oh, overhead. Okay. Look. Remember this one, you guys? I have this all oh, in my yeah, picture. Yeah. This is Ricky Frank's piece. I only, I polished one side and I left the other raw. That's his signature. I love it, Ricky. Every time I see this, I feel your energy. I swear. I love your pieces. Okay. Keep going. Okay. So go ahead. Sorry. No, I can't. The lighting over here isn't too good. So I'm not worrying about just getting in the low areas. Got I'm, it. I'm just going to go because I'm, I'm not. I've got the jewel tool where my lighting is and I don't want to have to deal with moving it right now. So try to keep it off the wires, but I, I can grind that off. So right now, you guys, he's filling in the, the low parts that he right. noticed after grinding on the jewel tool. And that's pretty cool. I'm excited to watch this process because he really wants his piece to be completely even and not thin it out to ruin that, you know, that looking down into the river with the rocks and the glistening. It's true. When you remove all of that, it diminishes that effect. So I'm here with you, Ricky. I'm, I've got it. You got me captivated. Okay, good. So let's see. So this is when I take my time and it's one of those questions that I'm asking myself is what is good enough and what is good enough at this step? Um, and there's not a right answer for that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this into the kiln room and I'm going to do this in the kiln room. Show me. Well, because it's a bigger piece. Um, this is a bigger piece and it's, got, it's going to take a little long with the torch. Ah, so gotcha. I'm going to do it in the kiln and let me tell you what I'm going to look for. Uh, the, the obvious thing to look for is, and so this is a little trick about kiln fire. Um, I tell my students two different ways, two different things to think about. One is to think about the principle of intention. So intention is three different steps. One is what is your goal? Number two is what has to change for you to reach your goal? Number three is how can you tell if the change has happened? And that's going to be what I do with the, the jewel tool. Same thing. What, what result? Right. What changes? How do you know? So I find with the jewel tool, if I have good lighting, I can tell better. Make, you know. So yeah. when I put this in the kiln, the change I want is I want all of the enamel to be perfectly smooth, no pits, no bubbles, no scratches. What has to change? The enamel has to get hot enough for a long enough time to do mm -hmm. that. How can I tell? Well, the first thing I'm going to see is the fresh enamel is going to get glossy. And then the ground surface is going to have lots of little pits and scratches and it's going to get smooth. So what I'm going to do is look for, um, that's going to be my first thing to tell. So I don't even care about what's happening. If I'm seeing, remember the orange, remember the surface when we fired the color and the enamel changed? Yes. That's what's going to happen here. So I'm not paying any attention until that's smooth and glossy there and mm -hmm. there. I got then you. Then I'm going to start paying attention to the other areas and try to see if I can see pits or scratches, because if I see pits or scratches, it's not in long enough. And then I'll pull the piece out and I've got a nice light over my kiln. And that's how I'm going to be able to tell because I have enough light to see. It's hard to look inside the kiln and see everything you want to see. You can see some things, but there's some things you can't see because of the light of the kiln. So I'm going to go put that in the kiln now. I'll be, don't ask me a question for uh, about a minute. I'll be right no back. Worries.
No worries.